Welcome back everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do the email validation part of our register system. And you saw in the last video that I copied all of my files over to my dedicated server. Um, you don't have a you don't need a dedicated server to do this. You could have a VPS or just a regular hosting account. And I got that copied over and um, I've also got my database copied over. So, um, you know, depending on what sort of uh, SQL client you're using, um, if you have PHP MyAdmin like me, you can just click, uh, you know, you select your database and you just select it here and then you'll click export and that's going to give you a .sql file and then you can go into your PHP MyAdmin for your, in your online hosting account and then just, uh, you know, go into your, your, well, first create your database first. In my case, it's called FFNew and then uh, you want to click import and import that SQL and you'll be able to uh, restore your database like that. So you'll see here that I have two users here. Um, basically all this stuff's the same, but well, not exactly. We have um, a reg time here. I don't remember if that was in the last video. And we also have a new column which is called activated. So by default, when they just register, um, activate is all gonna be set to zero. But after they get the validation uh, email sent to themselves, and uh, they uh, click the link, then this is gonna get updated to one, then they're gonna be an active member and they're gonna be able to log in. And in our system, they're not gonna be able to log in until this activate is set to one. So I think we can go over to the code now and see how this is done. Um, I'm just gonna briefly just skip through what we have so far. Um, we have a register controller here. And what I've done is I've added a constructor to this. And you'll see at the top here, we have public function underscore underscore construct. This is how you create a construct in, in CodeIgniter or any PHP class for that matter. And then when we create our own constructor in CodeIgniter, we must call the parent uh, the parents constructor right after. So you'll see here I have uh, parent colon colon. We're referencing the parents constructor, which is CI underscore controller. And we get that initialized and then we do um, you know, whatever kind of house housekeeping we want to do in our own controller um, right here. So in my case, what I wanted to do was, um, you know, anytime we access this class, uh, we call a method or whatever, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run our constructor function right here. And inside that I have this load model and I'm loading in model user because we're just going to, you know, we're going to use this model a lot within this um, register class. So now that that's done, um, you know, we start off with our register page. Um, we have, which is a register user right here. And, uh, you know, all of our validations get submitted here. We do all of our validation. And then if all of this checks out, then form validation run. This, this uh, you know, evaluates to true. We saw that before. And then we're going to go down into this else block here. Now inside the else block, the first thing we're doing is the insert user method. We looked at this last time and we can just go over to our model user here and we see that method right here and then we are basically um, we're going to insert the user into the database here and you know uh, if we get a successful insertion into the database then we're going to set the session we also looked at that in the in the last video but a new thing that we have here is we have this send validation email so when we use the this keyword in front we are referring to the current class, which is this uh, model user class. And we want to run the send validation email method. So we can just go down to that right now. And um, actually, I think I made one change in set session that I want to talk about. And uh, it's important too. So if we go down to this set session right here, you'll see it's taking all of the parameters uh, that it was before. Um, but I'm selecting one more thing from set session which is reg time right here. And the reason why I'm selecting reg time is because I want to uh, make a, you know, an email code that we're going to send to these users. And I decided to use reg time to do this. And basically, you know, what I'm doing is, you know, reg time is a timestamp. And what I want to do is I want to take that timestamp and I want to cast it to a string by putting this in front of it. And then I want to um, run the uh, md5 function um, on that string. So, well, that's not very clear. I think I have a, I think I have an example down here. Yeah, I do. So um, basically, the reason why I grab reg time in this query is so 
I can avoid doing another query later on. Um, you know, we can just get them both in one go right here. And then, you know, we set all of the session data here. And if you go look down at the bottom here, you'll see this email code. Um, this is a property of our class we created. If I go to the top right here, um, you'll see that private property that I created right here. And this email code is set to row. We're getting the reg time here. This is going to be a uh, data type of, you know, it's going to be a timestamp. It's going to have the date and it's going to have the time in it. And then what I'm going to do that, what I'm going to do to that is I'm first going to cast it to a string, okay? And after it's cast to a string, it's going to look exactly the same, except it's going to be a string. It's not going to be, um, it's not going to be a date object. And then we're going to run the MD5 function on that string. So the reason why I did this is because, you know, this is going to be a unique value, this date, and then we convert it to a string and then run MD5 on it. And we are going to get our email code like that. And then we're going to store this as a property of a class. So, you know, rather than us returning this email code at the end of this function and then passing it into the send validation email, we can just set that as a property of the class right here. And then we go this session set set users data, uh, basically uh, setting the session variables right here. Uh, we talked about that in a previous video. Um, so this function is done now, and we can go back up to uh, where it was called. And after this is done, we can do this send validation email. So let's go down to that function now. And then what I'm doing here is I'm loading in the, um, the email class right here because we're going to send an email now. And then the uh, email is set to well, this email variable. Uh, we're setting that to the, you know, the user's email address, and we're getting that from their session. And then email code is set to um, that you know, private property of our class we just created. Uh, this email code. So referencing that there. And then if we go down here, we'll see all the things we need to do to send an email in CodeIgniter. Now, I wanted to send an HTML email, of course, because we want that, uh, we want them to have a link with it, which they can click on. So we're going to need an A tag for that. So we use this email set mail type to HTML, and the email is going to be from, uh, from the bot email. So rather than me hard coding something in here like admin at freightform.com, and then later on we don't want to use that, um, a better way is not to hard code that in here, is to use it in the config file. And if we look at config.php right here, you'll see the new entries that I put in here. We have config admin email, that's set to my email. And then we have bot email, so all of the emails are going to be set from admin at freightform.com. You know, whenever you find yourself hard coding values like this into your code, um, you can know that you're doing something wrong and you want to put these in a config file and then we can just change these in one place later and then anywhere we reference them in our site, um, they're going to be updated right away. So let's just go back over to the model right here and then so we have our from and then to. Now right now this is set to just my email because we're testing, but later on we're going to make this dynamic. We're going to find out, you know, what user are we sending to and this is going to be a dynamic email variable right here. Uh, we have the subject of our email right here. And then after that, what we're doing is we're slowly building up our message. So the first part of our message, we're setting the doc type here, uh, meta tags, head and body. I'm not sure that all of this is necessary. Um, I think it probably isn't, but I don't think it's hurting anything there. So we can just leave that there for now. Head and body. And then we are going to concatenate onto our message variable over and over again. And we do that using dot equals. And then we go dear. And then we reference their first name here. And then in the message, we say thanks for registering on Freight Forum, please. And then we have click here. So we're doing an A tag right here. And then it's going to show click here. And all they're going to need to do is just click that. And then they're going to be activated on the site. Um, so you'll see that we have, um, you know, what. What link are we sending to here? Well, I put a, a little comment right here. So we are going to submit to the register controller and then the validate email method of the register controller. And then the first parameter is going to be their email address right here. And then the second parameter is going to uh, be that email code. So this is the way CodeIgniter works. If you, you know, all of the pages are basically methods. So we have this validate email, this is a method. And we can pass things to our method. 
by going slash the first parameter slash the second parameter. And one thing that I should mention is you'll see that, um, you know, the way I did this, I put the email address right here, john at doe.com. And, you know, this is actually valid um, to, you know, you can put it in a URL. You can put these characters in here. There's no, like, illegal characters right here. But one thing we do need to do in our config.php is we need to make sure that all of these characters um, are allowed in the URL and code igniter. So if I go over to config.php here and I scroll down, we'll see the permitted URI characters. And by default with code igniter, this at one isn't created. So what I did is I just added that at one right there. Uh, we can also see the dot right there. And um, you know now we're, we're now this uh, email link I'm sending them. It's it's going to be able to work now. So let's go over to our model here. And yeah, thanks for registering on Freight Forum. We send them an A tag with a link like this. And then click on that to activate your account. And then just concatenating the final bits here. Thank you. Um, ending the body and HTML tags. And then uh, we set the message property here. So this email message, uh, we pass it that message string. And then finally we do this email send in order to send it. So what we can do now is we can test this out. I'm just going to go over to the site here and click register. And let's just put a name in here. We'll call it, uh, we'll call it Jimmy Doe. Uh, give him uh, some random country. Say Jimmy at doe.com and a password of password. Let's click register. And it says, thanks for registering Jimmy. Now I'm going to go over to my email account right here. And you'll see this was sent from Freight Forum. Please activate your account at Freight Forum. Let's open this up. And you'll see here, Dear Jimmy, thanks for registering on Freight Forum. Now, at first glance, this just looks like a regular text email, um, but it's not. We have break tags here after these, and we have our A link right here. Please click here to activate your account. So I'm just going to click on this right now. And it says your email address, uh, jimmy at doe.com, has been activated. You may now log into the site. And if we look at the URL right here, we'll see we have jimmy at doe.com in the first parameter. And the second parameter is that email code. And that's getting passed to this um, validate email method right here. So let's just go back over to the code here. And so what we've done is we've you know submitted to our URL. So we can go back over to our register controller right here now. And you'll see that function right here, validate email. And you can see it takes the email address and email code as the parameters. And we sent those parameters um, you know, through the URL string there. And the first thing I'm doing, and probably it's not necessary, is I'm doing email code is set to trim email code. Um, just in case they put some spaces at the end of that email code, uh, we're just trimming those off. But um, probably 99% of the time, that's not going to be an issue. And then we run this model user uh, validate email and we're going to pass it the email address and the email code. And we're going to get something returned by this and we're going to store that in validated. And you can tell from you know the uh, variable name that I use here that this is going to be a Boolean. This is going to be either true or false. And we're going to find out if we validated them or not. So we can go over back to our model here and go to that validate email function. And let's just find that here. And here we have it validate email. It takes the email address and the email code. And the first thing we're doing is our SQL uh, select email and reg time and first name from users where email is set to email address and limit one because we only uh, want one result. And we would only get one result anyways because we're only going to have one instance of that email in our database. And you'll see that the way that I put in this variable right here I use interpolation and you know interpolation is a lot more clear than using the other way of putting uh, variables into your SQL. If I go to the top here um, you can see that way I have like I'm ending the string then I'm concatting a variable and the string and a little bit cleaner is to use interpolation and I just have my uh, quotation marks here because we're going to um, we're, we're, this value is going to be a string so we need a you know single quotation marks around it. And then we just pass the email address in there. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to run the query. In Code Igniter, we run the query with this DB query. Uh, we pass it the SQL. And that gets stored in this result variable right here. And then 
we are going to, well, this is basically, it's going to return an object here. And then if we want to access a single row in Codeigniter, we can use result arrow row like this. And um, basically, this is going to return an object to, and we're just going to store that in row. And then you can see what I'm doing with my row down here. Um, we're saying if the number of rows was equal to one, so if we got one row back, and a row arrow first name, if this is a truthy value, so basically this is just checking that the first name is not an empty string, which it's never going to be, but I check for that anyways. So if these two values are the same, we are going to run this activate account. So by this point, we know that um, there was nothing wrong with their email link. They clicked it. We found their we found their row in the database, and we're going to go activate their account now. And we do this activate account, and we pass it the email address. So we can go down to that function uh, here, which is activate account. And then the SQL is now update user set activated equal to one, where the email is equal to email address. You see that I didn't use interpolation here, so it's uh, not as nice. But um, limit one after that. Uh, we run the query, and if the DB affected rows was equal to one, so if we update one row here, this is going to equal to one, and then we're going to return return true here. Or else, what we're going to do is we're going to echo this error message. But I don't think that this is going to happen under any circumstances. Um, but I put it there anyways. So we are going to basically do the update here. We're going to change that um, 0 to a 1. And if we um, look at our database here, this users table, um, you'll see we have that new user here, Jimmy. And um, because they clicked on the link, this activate is set to 1 right now. Um, this function is going to return true. And then we can go back up to uh, where we called it, which was right here. And this is going to be true. And now if result is equal to true, then this validate email function is going to return true as well. So we can go back over to the controller here. And then this validated variable is going to be set to true right now. And then if true is equal to true, well, of course that's true. Then we are going to, um, we're going to send them to this view. And the view that we're going to send them to now is view underscore email validated. And then we're going to pass that. Um, the email address and that's going to be used um, inside our view. So we can just open up that file right here and basically all this file says is your email address and then we show them their email address has been activated. You may now log into the site. So that's basically the way I decided to do this email validation and there's a lot of different ways you could do it, um, probably a hundred different ways, but I think for our site um, this is going to be good enough and see you in the next video.